From the basketball's crazy state of Indiana, we're at the Ford Center in Evansville on a rainy March day for the men's Elite Eight here at Division II. It's the national quarterfinals featuring the reigning national champions, the Bearcats from Northwest Missouri State and the Bentley University Falcons. Welcome courtside at a gorgeous facility for this marquee event. Alongside Spencer Rule, I'm Brendan Gulick, and we have two great teams right out of the chute. Spence, we've got a team that has won three of the last four national championships. They have been so good at Division II. You get a look at the bracket here with uh, a, a team that Northwest Missouri State, man, they have been unbelievable. Bentley champions out of the NE10. I think we're going to have a bunch of fun. I think, Brennan, it'll be a great day today. These two teams are terrific matchups, the five and six seeds, as you said, with Northwest Missouri State. Tremendous history here over the last few years. A lot of fun here today at the Ford Center. Northwest Missouri State champions out of the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletics Association. They're a ridiculous 128 and eight over the last four years. This team is the standard bearer right now. Yes, absolutely incredible. The, the success that they have had in tournament play and it, I expect nothing less here today, this afternoon. Bentley's just outside the top 10 in the last poll of the regular season. Number 11 in the country, 25 and four. They went 14 and four in the Northeast 10 and they won the conference championship up in Walton, Massachusetts. Bentley making their fourth Elite Eight appearance in program history, but their first since 2010. Let's take a look at a couple of key players on this Bentley side. This young man right here, number 23, Jordan Mello Klein. He was the uh, most outstanding player at the regional, you know, conference, uh, all conference first team player. This kid can really stroke it. Uh, Jordan is a just absolutely terrific player, very dynamic in, in anything he does, shooting the basketball, getting to the rim. What I think is most impressive of him at six foot one, number eight ranked in the country in defensive rebounding at just over eight per game. Absolutely terrific. He's had a terrific uh, tournament thus far. Look for a big game out of him today. Love the effort on that side of the ball. For Northwest Missouri State, you also saw an All American from Manhattan, Kansas be introduced. He wears number 12, Trevor Hudgens. This kid is worth the price of admission. Absolutely. Phenomenal basketball player. 27 points in the regional final game. It has just an explosive crossover and hesitation and go move. Uh, it, what's really interesting is between Hudgens and Diego Bernard, number one for them, the 14 and 0 in NCAA tournament play. That's something. What a duo. Never lost in the NCAA tournament, those two, Diego Bernard, all defensive team in the MIAA and a second team all conference performer. Northwest Missouri State, they were national champions in 2017, 2019, and in 2021. Had a good team in 2020, but didn't have a chance, obviously, with the COVID cancellation. They are trying this week to become the first team in the history of Division II basketball to win three consecutive national championships. If they do it, Spencer, how do they get it done? Well, I think you know, any time we talk about championship basketball, it's on the defensive end. They, they, they hold teams to 62 points a game. That's going to be a big key for them today. Bearcats are in their typical green jerseys. The Bentley Falcons will be in white. Champions from the NE10, champions from the MIAA up in Maryville. And we are just about ready to rock. Our officials for the game. Head referee is Cody Crum. Devin Page and Michael Mojica alongside him. The opening tip was not touched. <laughs> and so a bit of an uh, anticlimactic jump to get us going. We'll redo it. Shot clock and the uh, game clock had ticked down, so they've got to reset that. A false start right at the outset of the day. <laughs> uh, round two, here we go. That's controlled by the Falcons. Starting lineups for Bentley. Sophomore Zach Laput, all rookie teamer in the league. Senior guard Mason Webb. We talked about the graduate student. Terrific guard Jordan Mello Klein. Colton Lawrence, a grad student from Myerstown, PA. And Pete Bluss, the 6'7 forward from Hinsdale, Illinois. Driving into the middle of the key. Tough effort, but not quite enough. And the Bearcats pull it away. 
after Webb's misfire. Northwest Missouri State, their starting lineup includes Diego Bernard, Isaiah Jackson, Wes Dreamer, Luke Waters, and the terrific Trevor Hudgens. Early foul here on the Falcons. It's on Mello Klein. I uh, beg your pardon, Colton Lawrence. Lawrence picks up the first personal. 44 seconds or so into action. Northwest Missouri State, they were the three seed in the central region. Went on a nice run in the tournament. Hudgens had to hoist it. And the shooter's touch didn't fall home for him. They played at the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls. Pretty impressive regional performance. Almost. Mason Webb sat on the edge of the rim and fell off. The Bearcats beat Augustana. They beat MSU Moorhead. And the uh, seven seed in the tournament, Washburn, in the second round. Augustana's had a pretty good team. Hudgens denied an entry with a left hand, up and good for two. The lefty with a nice little little up over the, uh, for the bucket. So Northwest Missouri State with the first basket here just a couple minutes in. First triple try, a little off target. Colton Lawrence, good rhythm shot, but couldn't find the bottom of the net. Bentley's a little bit cold here at the outset. They've missed their first three. See a lot of ball screening action today out of uh, Northwest. Bernard, high arcing shot considering how close he was falling away. He missed it, but helped win the ball back. Nicely done. Hudgens raises halfway down and popped out. Here come the Falcons making their fourth Elite Eight appearance in the history of Bentley basketball. That said, it's their first in 12 years. They haven't been on this stage since 2010. Good turnaround effort from Blust, but another one and done. No offensive rebounds yet on that end of the floor. <coughs> Hudgens with a left hand, unkind on the rim. Both teams probably dealing with a little adrenaline early on. You see it three minutes in, don't, two to nothing. Webb feeds into the low post, Blust. He grabbed his own miss and finally drew a whistle. Good effort there from Pete Blust. Yeah, you can see yeah, defensively, pretty solid job. Three possessions in a row down there in a the low post, walling up. Uh, but that time, Bluss was able to get into him a little bit and, and get the foul called. 34, Pete Bluss. You can see Bernard there thought perhaps the traveling uh, should have been called. Not the case, though. So instead, Bluss to the free throw line. Transfer from New Hampton. And we're going to have a substitution for the shooter in a moment. Blust hits the back of the rim, and Bentley still not on the scoreboard here. Nearly four minutes into the game. Played good defense, though. Kept this thing just a one-possession contest early on. Wes Dreamer, his size and length going to be a problem today. Waters gets a little help from Jackson. Hudgens has a bit of a shot clock problem here. Step back. That's why he's a first-team All-American. This kid's a real deal. Trevor Hudgens for three. Phenomenal, creating his own shot. Terrific three-point basket there. Northwest Missouri State trying to apply some ball pressure here. LaPut tucks it up and underneath. Unkind, and it's going back to the Bearcats. Time out on the floor. Well, neither team particularly uh, red hot to start the day, but Northwest Missouri State, good effort on both ends. They lead it 5-0 in 
at our first timeout. You're watching the Elite Eight on NCAA.com. Get a look there at Jay Lawson, head coach for the Bentley Falcons in his 31st season leading the team up in Massachusetts. This guy's had an incredible run. Yes, he has. Terrific coach. His team, very, very well coached. Great defensive team. Offensively, the way they move the basketball and such. Early on here, it seems like a little bit of the nerves, but uh, you know what? That timeout probably is well received, and they're going to come out here and turn it around here. Missed the first six shots from the floor, have the Falcons. But again, only down two possessions. They've given up one three to Hudgens and one additional two-point bucket. Hudgens has all five. Same starters out on the floor for Northwest Missouri State. Good try there from Bernard, but off target. The Bearcats not quite as deep in terms of just the number of guys you're going to see play for them. Bentley will play a few more players. Good take away underneath. Good job there getting his hand in the passing lane, West Dreamer. Well, Bearcats pressure, ball pressure really getting to Bentley here. Bentley's made one change. They brought Brian Wright Kinsey, the senior from Brooklyn, onto the floor. He's wearing number three, guarding in the low post at the moment. Hudgens measures. Another one that was pretty darn good out of his hand, but just couldn't find its way through. So both teams struggling a bit. I think your point early on there about maybe the nerves you're feeling those first few minutes of playing on a big stage like that, starting to, starting to manifest themselves, but that certainly helps. Great move under the basket. And the first points for Adria Amabilino Perez. Terrific, strong finish down there on the low post. Young man from Barcelona. Scores the first Falcon points. That one's off target from top of the arc. Laput, Webb, Mello Klein, Wright Kinsey, and Mabilino Perez. You see this Bentley, they like to move the basketball. A little five out, four out, one in, tight motion. A lot of ball screening. Wright Kinsey misfired, but a second chance with their second offensive rebound. Well, you wonder there if maybe just some of the anxiety and nervous energy from Laput. That one scooted away from him a bit. Coaches will try to settle these guys down. Bernard into the key, goes back out for a Dreamer triple try. Right on the money. Finally, Northwest Missouri State, something to feel good about. They'd hit one of their last seven before that three. Big shot for the 1,000-point score for Northwest. And then he plays good defense with Amabilino Perez working underneath. Nearly traveled instead. A contested three on the other end. Mason Webb. Well, Webb with the three there. He doesn't need much room to get it off, Brendan. Mason Webb hit eight three-pointers in the team's NCAA tournament opener when they beat Felicia in 95-63. The team hit a school record 19 threes in that game. Diego Bernard said, don't forget about me. I'm on my way to the can for two. And he'll shoot one from the free throw line as well. Diego with a nice strong finish there. What, what he does so well in just getting down to the rim and, and rising up and finishing. Diego Bernard out of St. Joseph, Missouri. Misfires on that effort. The Bearcats. It's the sixth time they've played on this stage, all of them since the turn of the millennium. 02, 04, 17, 19, 21, and now 2022. They have been in the Elite Eight. Good job there by Bernard. It's kind of crazy what head coach Ben McCollum has put together up in Maryville. Hudgens, oh baby, too easy, right through the right side. Terrific ghost screen action there, faking the screen, going underneath the defender, wide open lane for Hudgens to drive. 
Lawrence goes from right to left, misses, and Bernard skies in for the rebound. Bernard showing a willingness early in this game to play a little bigger than his size might indicate. Dreamer and Hudgens, a little one-two action. West Dreamer misses off to the left. Bentley's hit just two of its first 11 shots. They trail by seven as we near the midway point of the first half. Mabiliano Perez, no, but the cleanup, no problem, Mason Webb. Great offensive rebound for the 6-4 guard. Well-needed basket for Bentley. And, and Bentley, you alluded to it earlier, they're so good rebounding the ball. They're actually number two in the country in rebounding margin. They're out-rebounding teams. You know, this is the 30th game of the year, and they are averaging 11 more rebounds per game than their opponents. Mabiliano Perez certainly a big reason for that. Partially rejected. Good job, Brian Wright Kinsey. But a long segment here without a stoppage all the way to the can. A little contact, not enough for the whistle. Doesn't matter. Look at Mello Klein. Great finish. It's amazing. Fastball's a game of runs, and we're seeing it play out here. Northwest Missouri State by three. Dreamer thought he had good positioning. Back to Bernard in the middle of the key, was denied, so a kick out for Hudgens, three. Oh, my goodness gracious. How did that not go home? Had some great looks, and uh, the Bearcats are making Bentley pay for being a little over-aggressive at times. Nicely done as the Bearcats continue this move here. They have not scored in the last two-plus minutes. We still have not had our under 12 media timeout. Excellent find, what a finish. Luke Waters easy lay-in, but how about the pass? Great control by Jackson, get in there, jump stop, and an easy bounce pass for the, and the finish. Northwest Missouri State calls a timeout. Check this play out. Waters lays it home, and the Bearcats have a 14-9 lead with 9.54 to play in the first half. Ben McCollum drawing something up for the Bearcats during this timeout. 13th year as the head coach for Northwest Missouri State. This guy has some kind of resume. He is 26 and five as a head coach in the NCAA tournament. This is his 10th year coaching in the tournament, 13 total seasons in Maryville. I mean, I'm not sure how you have a, a better looking resume than that. Absolutely fantastic coach in Coach McCollum. He, he's, you see it in the way his teams continue to play, the way they limit turnovers. Great defensive team. Well coached. Won 14 straight NCAA tournament games and 21 of its last 22. Right side, that's a two-pointer. No good, but another crack at it for Isaac Martin. Actually, beg your pardon. Pete Blust is back on the floor, and it's out of bounds. Wright Kinsey, Mello Klein, Colton Lawrence, Pete Blust, and Zach Laput out there for Bentley with the starting five for Northwest Missouri State. Bernard, Jackson, Dreamer, Hudgens, and Waters. Hudgens back into the corner. Bernard just off target. Good job grabbing the rebound, tipping it to a teammate from Lawrence. And for a moment, Bentley's got a numerical advantage, and they capitalize. Colton Lawrence for three. Great look in transition for Lawrence to get that shot from the top of the arc. Lawrence with his first basket of the night. He had missed his first five, so that'll help him settle in a bit. We get under nine minutes to go in the first half, and suddenly, Northwest Missouri State's lead is only two. They were up 12-5 at one point. 
Falcons trying to lock in on the defensive end as Waters goes to work and turns it over. First Northwest Missouri State turnover. They almost pulled it right back, and they do. Bearcats getting it done on the other end. Uh, Coach Lawson not too happy about that one. You force a, a first a turnover like that, but then come and give it right back to them. Look at the effort there from Wright Kinsey. Nicely done. Jackson, Waters, and now Hudgens. Good patience right here offensively. Moving the basketball, a lot of ball screening, the ghost of ghost screening as we've talked about. Shot clock winding down. Dreamer turns and scores. Great baseline jump hook there. Not an easy shot. No, but he made it look easy. Awfully, uh, awfully under control. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Each team with a couple of triples. And now another costly turnover for Bentley. Bernard got fouled on the way in. That's five turnovers now for the, this Bentley team. Can't, can't give uh, Missouri any more than uh, they, they, you're already giving them. Mason Webb called for the foul there as we have a timeout on the floor. First half coverage of the Elite Eight returns in just a moment. The Bearcats lead by four on NCAA.com. Northwest Missouri State 16, Bentley 12, but it's been the Falcons coughing up the ball that's been a little frustrating for them early on. Well, the Bearcats' pressure has is, is just been really, really hot, and going back into Bentley's last game, they turned the ball over quite a few times late in the game when pressure was ramped up in the regional final game. So we see how they adjust to it here coming out of the timeout. Well, Jay Lawson is won almost 600 games. He's coached in closing in on 1,000 games all time. I would imagine he's uh, come into the Elite Eight with a plan to handle ball pressure from one of the better defensive teams in the nation. Shouldn't take them by surprise. Lawson has only had two losing seasons in 31 years. How about that? Wow. Hudgens. Well, they're making it a little more difficult on him than he's probably used to. Great job quickly getting up the floor. Pete Blust hands it off, and the whistle sends Mason Webb to the line. There's one way to beat the defense, and that's by beating it down the floor. Wait, terrific job advancing the ball up and a nice little dish. Got to the line shooting two. So Mason Webb out of Oklahoma City. Member of the NE10 All Tournament team, as Bentley went on to win a conference championship. By the way, they are East Region champions. That's how they got here, beating Felician Pace and St. Thomas Aquinas in the regional championship game. They finally, got past Franklin Pierce in the conference title game. That was. A tough hurdle for them because they had lost twice to Franklin Pierce in the regular season, two of their four losses all year long. Aggressive move to the bucket, Diego Bernard. Eighteen, fourteen. Bernard having a nice first half. Only has four points, but man, as he made his presence felt. Five rebounds, two assists, and a steal as well. Right, Kinsey gave it up, and now a turnover. LaPutte couldn't handle it. Bernard working up the floor with Jackson, and Jackson's the one that draws the foul. Great help defense there by Bernard uh, on that last offensive possession to create that turnover. Driving down the middle, he showed, tipped that pass, and it, they got the turnover. Isaiah Jackson. At the free throw line, Northwest Missouri State. 
Oh, misfire on the first. They have not gone to the bench yet. They've played their starting five exclusively so far. Oh for two. That's a bit unlike him. Mid-range game, just a little off the mark for Mello Klein. What do you think about his rhythm here early on? A little off? Having, having a tough time, but uh, uh, Northwest Missouri State's length, I think, the contestant shots has really al altered uh, their ability to, to make baskets. Dreamer had a good look from the corner, but couldn't finish it. And a foul on the baseline there. So Hudgens hit him on the arm. First personal on Hudgens, and finally, the Bearcats do go to the bench as Byron Alexander, redshirt freshman from Kansas City, makes his way in. Right, Kinsey. Oh, great rhythm three. Up to a uh, full was on the line, so it's a two ball, but off target. LaPutte grabs the miss. And he stepped on the sideline. Back to the Bearcats. Had a great look there from a baseline out of bounds play. Diagonal back screen into the down screen that uh, the shooter came off. Uh, uh, just didn't fall for him. Well, sometimes that happens. Northwest Missouri State hasn't exactly shot the lights out. 36% so far, 8 of 22. Bentley's 5 of 20. But Bentley is out rebounding the Bearcats 21 to 11. Made that comment earlier about a plus 11 rebound margin. That's over 40 minutes, not 15. Well, Trevor Hudgens is one of the best three point shooters in America. And he shows why they are a rhythm three. Oh, Hudgens made him pay for the mismatch that uh, was created there. Ended up having the big man for uh, Bentley, uh, Adria, on him defensively and a little, little tough there. Layup doesn't go, right? Kinsey can't follow it. Another thought on Hudgens across all levels of college basketball, Division One, Two, II, and Three. He is eighth nationally in career three-point shooting percentage. 467. This guy can get it going in a hurry. He leads the country in total points scored on his way into the Elite Eight. Little shimmy. Bernard finds a little space with that left hand. I'll tell you what, Hudgens gets a lot of attention, but man, is Bernard fun to watch. Ah, his explosiveness and athleticism is just fantastic. Amabliano so Perez. Fun. Called for the offensive foul. Lowered that shoulder. And Amabliano Perez heads back down after his first. Uh, great positioning by Dreamer there to step in, slide into it, and take the charge. He certainly had his feet set. He was outside the arc. Fairly easy call even though a frustrating one for Adria. Good clean strip from Mello Klein. Got the ball away from Alexander. It brings us to our final scheduled stoppage of the first half. Northwest Missouri State fighting through some first half shooting struggles and they have certainly not performed well on the glass, but they've led this wire to wire so far. Currently a nine point lead thanks to a 7-0 run. Back at NCAA.com, just a minute. Well, the Bentley Falcon faithful that made the trip from Massachusetts, or elsewhere, I guess, to, uh, to Indiana. I would imagine they're probably a a mix of pleased that you're right in the thick of things against one of the best teams in the country, but perhaps a bit frustrated with the way things have gone so far. Spencer, it, you, you've seen Bentley turn it over eight times, and it's turned into eight points for Northwest Missouri State. 
Bentley's only down nine, but they're plus 10 on the glass. How do you explain that? It's the, tur it's the turnovers. Uh, you can't give this, this Bearcat team any more extra possessions. Hudgens back to Dreamer. Uses a good ball fake. Now Trevor's open. Boy, those often go down, but for some reason, Hudgens is having a tough time right now. He is 4 of 11, rather 4 of 12. He's got 10 points, but not as efficient as normal. Give Bentley some credit for the way they played defense again to, uh, against him as Wright Kinsey turns around and puts it home. Tough concessive shot for Wright Kinsey there. Well done. That snapped a 0 for 4 and 1 for 7 stretch for Bentley. He pulls it back to 7 here. Well, it's getting late in the first half. First game of the day, by the way, the winner of this game will play either Black Hills State or Nova Southeastern in the semifinals on Thursday. Well, you see that uh, sideline out of bounds so many times since they've extended that three-point arc this season. How many times, guys, they just don't, they, they forget where they're at. Get caught with a heel on the stripe. That's a frustrating happenstance. They're calling it the first turnover for Northwest Missouri State. I thought they had one prior when they lost out of bounds on the other side, but perhaps that uh, wasn't technically a turnover. Either way, the Bearcats hold them to one and done. Hudgens, Dreamer, Bernard, Jackson, and Waters. Hudgens wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he had so much space. Shaking guys out of their shoes as Waters a little bit off target. Three of 14 now from behind the three-point line are the Bearcats, or else this thing could be wide open. Instead, a mid-range jump shot, bit off balance, but Lawrence doesn't find it. Good sideline screen by Bluss there to give him the nice uh, short corner jumper. Just didn't fall. Hudgens drives, Bernard follows up, slashing in from the other side and shuffle the sneakers. Now the Bentley pressure amping it up a little bit. Forced a couple turnovers here in the last few possessions. Now see if they can capitalize it on, on the offensive end. Bringing a guard in for a forward, Blust sits down, right Kinsey returns. Hello, Klein, only one of three. It's not even that he hasn't been able to, to score much. He, he just hasn't had a lot of chances. And right, Kinsey, fouled by Wes Dreamer. And McCollum says, how could that be a foul on this end of the floor? Yeah, he's questioning that one a little bit. Uh, Dreamer, not bad defensive positioning there. Might have got him trapped up in the feet a little bit, which caused him to fall. It certainly looked like it was a pretty good defensive play. Mitch Mascari, the redshirt freshman from Geneva, Illinois, comes in for Coach McCollum's team. Right, Kinsey. Everybody diving on the floor for it. Bentley was begging for a timeout. They're calling a jump ball. And the possession goes back the other way. Great hustle getting on the floor by, by both the Bearcats and the Falcons. Uh, try, try and come up with that, but unfortunately it leads to another turnover for the Bentley Falcons. Number nine for Bentley. Lawrence has taken the most number of shots on the Falcons. He's one of seven. Everybody else has been pretty well spread out, three or four shots apiece. Webb, the only one that's made more than one basket, he is two for four. From the left side, how about that? Mitch Mascari comes off the bench for Dreamer, comes right in and buries a three. Big three coming off that initial Princeton set. Uh, they just kept swinging the basketball. Good find for Mello Klein, and it falls off the front of the rim. Goodness gracious. 26-16, largest lead of the game for the Bearcats. 
here in the final 30 seconds of the half. Somewhere between 12 and 13 seconds, the difference between game and shot clock. Taking this one down a little bit. Hudgens, step back three. No. Blust grabs the miss. Plenty of time for Bentley to set something up. Blust gets it from Mello Klein. Now Mello Klein connects. Finally, Jordan puts one home. Big shot. Good if it goes half. for Hudgens, and he throws it over the backboard. Your thoughts on the first half? So, great, great way for jo Jordan Mello Klein to finish off the half after uh, being a little bit cold there, uh, and definitely well needed. Got a little bit of momentum going in into halftime, uh, but uh, Coach Lawson, he's going to be going in here. Hey, we've got to clean things up on the offensive end and just take care of the basketball. Mello Klein, certainly their leader. When that guy is going well, typically the Falcons go well, and they need offense from other spots at the moment. Northwest Missouri State by seven at the break. Back in a moment here. Well, the Falcons and Bearcats have wrapped up their locker room chat on the floor, loosening up for the start of the second half in the Elite Eight. Winner plays in the national semifinals two days from now. So far, so good for the Bearcats, two-time defending champions. Trevor Hudgens leads the way for them with 10 points as we look at some of his first half highlights. Spence, he scored 10 points, but he did it on four of 13 shooting because they made it really difficult on him. Yeah, he's, he's had a hard time shooting from behind the arc. Two of nine from, from a three-point land. Uh, four of 13 overall, like you said. He's got to, I think, maybe not settle so much, you know. He's doing a nice job uh, overall as a team and himself at times of really breaking down the defense and attacking the basket. Continue to do that, and things will open up. Going to look at some of these first half numbers, which include those 11 points off of nine Bentley turnovers. The other thing you don't know uh, based off those numbers is the huge rebounding deficit. Bentley is plus 10 on the glass, and I think that has really helped them overcome the fact that they haven't shot it great themselves. Plus, Northwest Missouri State hasn't exactly filled up the stat sheet from behind the three-point line. This game could be a lot more widespread here at the break. It absolutely could. You say Bentley's rebounding margin uh, up plus 10 on the day. They're up six when it comes to offensive rebounds, but only have two second-chance points. Yo, this second half, and, and I will say this Bentley team, they've come from behind nine times this year. Uh, Coach Lawson in his press conference yesterday talked about how good of a second half team they have been, and the really reality is it's a positive thing. Uh, get to halftime, uh, make the adjustments. Your biggest thing is taking care of the basketball, and they are. They're fortunate they, to only be down uh, seven points just because Northwest Missouri has not shot in the ball that well, particularly only 25% from behind the arc. And, and gosh, how often do you see it in tournament play, right? If you commit fouls at inopportune times or if you, you have sloppy turnovers or you just have a, a, a small cold stretch shooting the ball, your season's over like that. That's exa exactly right. You know, it, it, everybody here at this level in the Elite Eight are very good basketball teams. And if, although you're a good basketball team and you don't show up for a little bit of time, the other really good basketball team is going to make you pay. <laughs> you know, we talked about Hudgens. I mean, he is pretty arguably the best player in the history of Northwest Missouri State basketball. He is the second highest active scoring leader in the country across all divisions of college basketball. An incredible three-point shooter, in fact, he is the only player in NCAA men's basketball at all with more than 2,500 points and more than 600 assists. And he is closing in on 2,800 career points and 700 career assists. It's been a pretty special career for Hudgens. They're going to lean on him pretty heavily as we start the second half with a little kick down on this end. If you've joined us a little bit late this afternoon, I'm Brendan Gulick along with Spencer Rule and our entire NCAA production crew, glad to have you on board for four games today. The eight best Division II men's teams in America. A foul under the basketball, not a jump ball. Waters thought he had enough to warrant going the other direction. Another offensive rebound for the Falcons there. 
Why are they so successful right now on the offensive glass? Is it effort or is it positioning? I think it's a combination of both. The effort gets you the good positioning. And it's a, it's all about a mindset when it comes to offensive rebounds. you you got to have that mindset, uh, and the mindset brings out the effort. Lawrence banging around another Bearcat foul. So two fouls in the opening 36 seconds. Both of them on Waters. Another look. Good. Trying to play a little bit of bully ball down there, uh, Colton Lawrence. And, uh, good, strong. Able to take the contact and got the foul. Just kind of hooked him around that arm. Now Waters lays off a little bit, and perhaps he shouldn't have because Colton Lawrence got the better of him with a nice little fadeaway. Just a terrific drive, under control, good jump stop and pull up. I think it's worth noting here that Jordan Mello Klein, who hit that three at the end of the first half, they reviewed that before the officials went to the locker room. It upheld as a three-point shot. He's hit two of six on the day as Wes Dreamer rips the Nets. A great wide open look. Not what Bentley wanted after coming out of the half and got a, got a score. Want to get that stop to start as well. Second three for Dreamer. He's got eight. Little ball fake underneath. Will put in trouble. Boy, no three in the key. Northwest Missouri State sure wanted it, but it's going their way anyways. All smiles for Dreamer after this perfect shot. Good ball control and body control for Wes. Near the midcourt stripe. Dreamer's fun to watch, man. It's 6'7", only a sophomore. Wow. Oh. That should have been going the other way. Uh, should have been going the other way. A little questionable there. I think a lot of people were thinking that as well. Let's see if we get a better look at that here shortly. In the meantime, Bearcats by eight. LaPut stays down here. One more look here. Yeah, oh looked, boy. Really looked like uh, went off a bluff's hand there. All right, well, sometimes things don't go your way and you got to find a way to fight through the adversity. Bentley hopes to take advantage of the rare turnover by the Bearcats. In fact, so rare, you'd argue they didn't turn it over. It was only their second of the entire game. By the way, as, as uh, Bentley continues to have some whistles in their favor here, the Bentley Falcons, if one thing I think really could help them down the stretch here, Spence, they are one of the most disciplined teams in the country. Good play underneath the basket. Blust lays it home. They don't commit fouls. I mean, averaging about 12 fouls a game. Very, very smart defensive team. They don't take big time gambles, and they don't put people on the foul line. You do, you do those two things. You put yourself in a good position to win basketball games, and that's why they've been pretty successful here uh, up, up to today. Jackson to Waters, back to the bucket, jarred free. Bluss got his hands in there. Numbers for Bentley. Rhythm three, just off target. Good drive from Colton Lawrence, one and done. As Brennan, you're starting to see on both sides of the floor, getting pretty physical down low. The second half, uh, juice is coming out. It's going to be fun uh, the rest of the way. <laughs> time for a little bully ball. Both these teams really want to keep their season going on Thursday. A chance to play in the national semifinals. Excellent play, Isaiah Jackson for two. Great isolation. Rip through and just go off two feet. Great athletic move. Mello Klein steps out of bounds. 11th Bentley turnover. A trail by eight. Well, you just don't see too many box scores with the kind of discrepancy between rebounding and, and scoreboard the way this one does, where Bentley trails by eight points, but they're plus 12 on the glass. But as you pointed out earlier, man, the big difference in this game, you just can't cough it up the way Bentley has. They've turned it over 11 times and only forced three. Brennan, so many times, coaches are will say, hey, 
if you win the rebounding battle, you're you're going to put yourselves in a great position to win the game. Absolutely. And as, as much as they are dominating the glass right now in Bentley, it's just not uh, turning into points for them. Lawrence frees up up top. He's just 2 of 10 shooting the rock today. Got bumped from behind. And he was begging for a foul call. I can see why as Dreamer is a little slow to get up. Hopefully Dreamer's okay. In the meantime, well, he holds his left foot. We have a timeout on the floor for our first stoppage under 16. So we'll step aside. Dreamer slowly back up on his two feet. Good sign there. And we'll return here in just a moment with the Bearcats out front by eight. Now the Bearcats have led this game wire to wire so far, but they haven't exactly run away with it. Currently the lead is eight. As you get a look at the Bearcats coming back on the floor. How about Diego Bernard? You know, a lot, of, a lot of talk about Trevor Hudgens, and that's fine. But Bernard is in a category all by himself at the moment. He's the only player in the history of Northwest basketball to have at least 1,200 points, 600 rebounds, and 300 assists. And he's way over those thresholds. He has 1,640 points, 777 rebounds, and almost 400 assists. He is one of the most selfless players in the history of the program. And while he can certainly light up the, the stat sheet, I think it's what he does that doesn't show up in the box score, his energy and his toughness on both ends of the floor that make this team really go because a lot of spotlight is on that guy, Hudgens. Lust misses from nearby. Right Kinsey up top. Colton Lawrence perhaps a little trigger shy after a semi-frustrating afternoon shooting it. Right Kinsey, tough angle, and he scores. Great drive and, and layup there. And not from a, hard, a tough angle, too. Good body control from Brian as he hung in the air for a moment. He's got four points in 15 minutes, a couple block shots. Hudgens, good backdoor find. Waters to the free throw line. You see there, Brennan, that the, the screening game set that up. Bentley, they're, they're switching ball screens now. Hudgens got the mismatch with Blust and was able to start taking him off, off the dribble, and the other, other defense had to help and got the little backdoor. It's just the sixth foul that Bentley has committed all game, and we've played 25 minutes of basketball. Northwest extends the lead to seven. They've been up as many as 10, but it was 26-16. We got a lane violation on Dreamer. So that shot is waved off, and you can see Bernard trying to bark at his teammates and say, let's lock back in. Mello Klein was open for a second. Slithers to his left, draws the contact, and he will shoot two. He loves that pull-up jumper, particularly the lefty going to his left side, and uh, Diego Bernard sliding up underneath him, drew the foul. I'm just going to say, I like his presence, where he's kind of feeling that he beat Bernard off the dribble, and then when he pulled up, Bernard's momentum just took him right in. That's exactly right. Hello, Klein, a smart player. Hits the first foul shot. This would cut it to a handful. And Jordan's got seven. Bentley, four of six from the free throw line as a team. Northwest Missouri State, one of five from the strike. Dreamer, good look underneath, but it's intercepted. Good active hands from Colton Lawrence. Right, Kinsey hands to Mello Klein, Blust and Lawrence around the perimeter. Colton fades away off the front of the rim and 
Diego Bernard has been really active on the glass. Yes, he has. Number seven on the day. And you see it both sides of the floor. Just, you know, good activity uh, with his athleticism. He, he can take guys off the dribble and on the defensive end. He gets his hands on a lot of stuff. Waters back to the sure-handed Trevor Hudgens, who rips the nets from the corner. Now, there's only so many tough shots that that guy's going to miss on the day. And he's... He's, he struggled from behind the arc, but came up with a big one there. A steal. Bernard helped poke it free. Hudgens slows the roll up the floor. Hudgens on Mello Klein. Waters, good ball fake. Euro step and a foul. Get a look at the three on one end here from Hudgens. Uh, does a great job of get, getting back out, opening up space. The big guy dribbled and was able to kick it out to him for a great shot. And then the big guy tries to create something of his own, does a, a fantastic job of taking his time, good shot fake, and uh, penetrate, and drew the foul. Water is perfect from the stripe there, and he <laughs> tells his teammate, Mitch Mascari, hey, uh, you can go on the other end of the floor. I got this covered. <laughs> Mascari returns to the bench, the starting five for the men in green back out there. Northwest Missouri State's never had a super deep roster and got a little uh, delay here for just a quick moment. Looks like maybe Zach Laput is dealing with some blood. So he'll go over to the athletic training staff. Yeah, you say not, you know, don't have the deep roster. You got three guys in the starting lineup in Bernard, Hudgens, and, and Waters that haven't left the floor yet today. Well, and, and I guess I maybe I should clarify that, right? I'm not talking about from an ability standpoint. You're just talking about how hard it is right now to crack the floor because I'm going to be honest with you, man. Watching this game, Northwest Missouri State is exerting uh, a lot of effort on both ends of the floor, but these guys don't look even the least bit fatigued. No, they do not. And it's... Well, that's all the training, hard work uh, over the course of six, seven months uh, of this season that uh, put them in that position. Bearcat faithful on their feet, trying to get behind Northwest. His lead is back to a game-high 10 now. Mello Klein raises, and he hits in front of his bench. What a shot, and a well-needed one. Big answer there for uh, Mello Webb. Silences the crowd. Into the corner, Waters back to Hudgens. Trevor was so open he wasn't sure he should take it. Bernard lost the handle. A good steal from Wright Kinsey. He's got a couple now. Feet set. Offensive foul. Wes Dreamer draws it. Out there again. Another forced turnover for Bentley down here. Uh, or they force the turnover, but then come down on the offensive end and turn it right back over. Pretty uh, pretty close one here. Great effort getting on the floor, pushing it up. But a Dreamer looked like he might have been in that restricted area, but looking at the replay, not so much. Mason Webb back in the game. Give me your thoughts on how the officiating uh, determines the charge based on where the contact is on the body. Sometimes if you're moving just a little bit, but you take it up high versus down low, maybe a little easier to draw the charge, no? Well, so many times it's, uh, you know, it comes to a legal guarding position. And if you're if in between the basket and, and uh, the man, that's going to give the official, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt from the official and get that charge call. Waters had his foot on the sideline. And so a mistake by the Bearcats. You know, I was talking a little bit earlier about the uh, fairly high number of turnovers for Bentley and maybe not giving Northwest defense enough credit. Of the 14 turnovers the Falcons have committed, make it 15 now, nine of them have been stolen away. So Northwest is causing some of that frustration more than the Falcons just not being there. And in the meantime, Jay Lawson just both hands on his face, 
wipes his brow as if to say, good grief, what's going on here after stepping out of bounds there. Underneath, Dreamer under control and to the strike. Great ball movement there. Start with Hudgens penetrating down to the baseline, got the full reversal, and then got Dreamer as he was cutting back door to the basket. Timeout on the floor for our under 12 stoppage. And it continues to be a Bearcat lead. They've had the lead since the get-go, but it's still within striking distance for Bentley. 37-30 here in Evansville, midway through the second half. Well, through the first eight minutes or so of this second half, we've played to an even 11-11 tie, which means Northwest Missouri State still leads by seven. It's 37-30 at the moment. Neither team really has somebody that's going off offensively. Both teams have plenty of guys that are capable, but Spence kind of um, more missed opportunities than I think both coaches would like to admit. I would agree, Brendan. You know, Bentley at halftime, you know, they're going in, hey, we've, we've got to take care of the ball, number one, but also we got to ramp it up and force some turnovers on the other end. They have forced four turnovers this half and have not converted on one of them. First free throw from Dreamer puts it home. I would say there's a, a pretty good crowd on hand considering that it is, you know, 1 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> on uh, on a Tuesday afternoon. But the Bearcats have traveled nicely. And at times, they have been a, a rambunctious bunch. But it is a little weird when you're shooting a free throw. And, well, you could hear somebody sneeze in the upper deck if they did. <laughs> one and done on that end. Lawrence off target. He's one of five now from deep. Not a shot you see uh, the Falcons take off and just that quick contested shot. Ball fake from Waters. Water. Bentley jumped out of the gym and Waters scores. Another offensive foul. That's a third charge that he's taken today. Fantastic defensive positioning by Dreamer. And the, the big fella, Luke Waters, uh, I don't think we talk about him enough. He has really made his presence felt on the defensive end and offensively. He's created some things for himself, but also some of his teammates. Waters, seven points in 29 minutes, but gosh, has he been an impact player. Great cut to the basket. Bernard took the handoff and laid it in with a left hand. And now the Bearcat lead is a game-high 12 timeout, Bentley. And again, started with penetration from Luke Waters in the corner. Right little dish handoff to uh, Bernard for the basket. Things are going well for the Bearcats. Halfway through the second half, back in a moment here on NCAA.com. Jordan Mello Klein certainly doesn't seem too concerned about the fact that his team is down 12. This is not totally unfamiliar territory for the Falcons. And Spence, there's way, way too much time for anybody to panic at the moment. But I think Bentley is keenly aware of a need to get going here. Well, that was a good time out there by uh, uh, by Coach Lawson. To, you know, wanted to cut, calm his team down a little bit and stop the momentum uh, by the Bearcats. Immediately, they give it away, and Bernard looks like an NBA star gliding down the left lane and laying it home. Another turnover for the Falcons, and, and the Bearcats make them pay for it. Right, Kinsey in trouble. Forces the issue into the corner where Webb raises, but misfires from three. And you just see this Bearcats defense. It's so active, the length of guys on the floor. Falcons can't get comfortable. Mascari well, saves it before it crosses the end line, but then he throws it away into the backcourt. Uh, just a little mishap there. Hudgens looked like he was going away from the basketball. Yeah. 
And you see here, just another great, uh, you know, opening coming out of the timeout there. Great job by Bernard. Lawrence needs a little help. And then he sets a bad screen. Oh, my gosh. Been a pretty tough day for a good player in Colton Lawrence. He's just not had his best effort today. No, that's tough, but that's it. This Northwest defense starting with ball pressure. He's ball, the ball handler is, is so out of his comfort zone uh, that forcing just all these different mistakes. Hudgens buries a three, and now it feels like this thing is turning. 10-0 run for the Bearcats. They've hit five shots in a row. Bentley has turned it over six times in the last five minutes. LaPutte on the right side draws contact. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good defense. Looked like the hands were straight up. He jumped down here in the restricted zone, but uh, must have came in contact with that hand or brought it down and create, got the contact foul for... Uh, LaPutte at the free throw line. Puck. How about Northwest Missouri State has hit seven of ten shots since halftime. Not only is it now in a, it was a 10-0 run prior to the, the free throw, but a 15-3 run. Well, Bentley still needs to apply a tourniquet here. They are hemorrhaging at the moment. I'm going to foul on the Falcons. Looking at the faces of some of those guys on the bench for Bentley. They are a bit concerned at the moment. And foul is enough to put them in the bonus. Well, Brendan, they're feeling it here. Uh, all, all the momentum is in Northwest favor right now. And uh, they've had a, a heck of a time trying to score here uh, over the last several minutes. Luke Waters hits the first, give him eight. Hudgens is starting to put up numbers a little bit more like his normal self, despite some of the inefficiency today. 16 points. Waters hits them both. Bernard's got 10 on five of eight from the floor. Dreamer's been really good. Nine points, but impacting the defensive end quite a bit. Lawrence feels like he's got to let it fly when he gets a rhythm look. Two on two the other way, and Hudgens was fouled before he even got to the basket. Well, and what we talked about earlier, Bentley doesn't put guy, teams on the line uh, a lot. You're seeing it here in the second half, though, and yeah, you got to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, down 18, uh, you're, you're, you're going after the ball a little bit more aggressively than you normally may have. Northwest Missouri State. It's gone on a 12-1 run now over the last two minutes and 40 seconds. Bentley does not have a field goal from the floor in the last 357, and they've turned it over five times in that stretch while Northwest hasn't missed in that stretch. And suddenly the bleed has ballooned to 20. Tough sledding right now for the Falcons. We're back in the Elite Eight for the first time since 2010. We had a heck of a run back from 2005 to 2011. They're in the Elite Eight three times, six Sweet 16 appearances total. So that one set on the front of the rim. The personal foul, Northwest Missouri State. But it certainly doesn't look like things are falling their favor here today. Wright Kinsey with a great drive, though. A lefty penetrating into the middle. They have a nice controlled jump stop and put it up. Couldn't get it to finish, though. Kinsey, well done. Hudgens with 2,763 career points, number 20 on the all-time scoring list coming in. And he's got a game-high 18 as Bernard pulls that away. Hudgens needs only 57 points to equal the all-time conference scoring record. Set by Bill Fennelly. Back in the late 70s and early 80s at Central Missouri. 57 points coming in. He's got 18 so far today. 39 more. 
Couldn't grab three there. Right Kinsey off his foot. Got rid of it quickly. Now Mello Klein pushes it. Lawrence hesitates. Good no look pass and a foul before a shot. Hey, it's amazing you talk about Hudgens and uh, you know, approaching that career mark. That's, those numbers are just incredible. It, what makes him so special is you know, he can shoot the ball so well from behind the arc you know, consistently, but then he's so explosive and crafty off the dribble that, man, that's a, that's a dangerous combo. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's both dangerous and, frankly, pretty rare. You know, there's a lot of guys that are three-point specialists that camp out around the arc and they can hurt you, but this guy can slash, he can shoot. He's got basketball, I'm sure to be played beyond his Bearcat playing days somewhere. Works hard on the defensive end of the floor. Under eight minutes to go. And Bentley charges for the fourth time this afternoon. This time Bernard takes it. Another timeout on the floor as Lawrence turns it over for the fifth time. We'll step aside, 51-32, the Bearcats cruising here in Evansville. Gosh, this combination of Diego Bernard and Trevor Hudgens has been scary good. Luke Waters getting involved. Right now, Northwest is clicking on all cylinders. Absolutely, Brennan, and you know, right before the timeout there, Bernard takes a charge to create the turno turnover. You know, certain things, they just don't show up in the stat line, but one thing that does show up and, and really stands out today is Bernard at six foot, leading all players with 11 rebounds. And leading all players with five fouls drawn. He's not afraid to stick his nose in there, man. This kid is the heartbeat of the Bearcat team. This is Dreamer lobbing to Bernard. Oh, he wanted to throw him an alley-oop. <laughs> uh, even Diego laughing a bit as he clapped his hands there in disbelief. Right, Kinsey tries to show off a sweet move and ends up cleaning up his own miss. Boy, if Diego Bernard would have dunked that one, he might have had to peel me off the ceiling. Oh, that was a <laughs> great play out of the timeout. Set it up with the back screen. And uh, just a nice open look. Uh, I think it was a, the pass was just a little bit low. Mello Klein commits the foul. Another look at this pretty impressive try. Great look. I think he might have just jumped just a little bit too early. <laughs> saw, saw it wide open, eyes lit up, and, man, couldn't, couldn't capitalize on it. How about on the Bentley side? I mean, they've got four guys that average 15 points a game. They have really leaned into their depth and balance all year long. Uh, and, unfortunately, today, while, you know, they've had some, uh, I guess, some decent looks here and there from Mello Klein, who's got 10, in particular, Lawrence is having a tough day. Two of 14 from the floor, three fouls and five turnovers, but shooters are gonna shoot, and he should, because he's got the confidence to still knock him down like that one. Oh, you gotta love that. A guy who has struggled today. Uh, step up when the team needs you a little bit. Get a little, get a little pick-me-up. Here we go. Laput. And Webb trying to get it going, too. Laputa actually on the bench at the moment. Waters off the window, spins it home for two. Give him 11 points. That was a great drive and way to be under control by him. They look we're trying to step in and take the charge, but just came to a good jump stop and, and uh, put it up under control. Bentley was the four seed. Northwest Missouri State the five seed in this weekend's tournament. Good cleanup job, Blust. Lost. Yeah, great job of staying with it. Ball was good, flopping all over the place. He picked it up right off the ground and put it up. Four points for Blust. 55-39, the Bearcat lead is still cushioned at the six minute mark. Oh, 
Not a lot of energy in this building at the moment. Back up top to Hudgens. Looked at Blust's feet and said, I think I can drive by you, but forgot Lawrence was there. So a transition triple off the front of the rim. Webb too short. Good look, though. Well, you see the Bearcats here starting to slow it down a little bit, trying to grind, grind clock, working for a good shot, limiting possessions. Good spin move, Diego Bernard. Right, Kinsey still nearly blocked it into the backboard, but a great effort. And a timeout for Northwest Missouri State. Just a quick 30-second stoppage. Each team with two timeouts remaining. How about this move? Corkscrews his way through the lane. Great, great spin move. He set him up coming down that right side of the lane, spun back to his, to his left, and, man, put it up and in. Hey, so we've got the number one seed in the tournament coming up next in, in Nova Southeastern. And they're going to play a, a pretty determined Black Hill State Yellow Jackets team who is a bit newer to this scene. Nova Southeastern, a, a gritty group. They've got guys from all over the place. Actually, a lot of Ohio players on their roster. But the Sharks, the number one team in the tournament, they haven't lost yet this year. If it's Northwest Missouri State that moves on, what is their vulnerability? How do you think someone can beat the Bearcats? Because when you look up to our right, you see the last three of the last four banners are green and white because the Bearcats have been the last team standing. Well, it's going to be interesting, particularly if Nova Southeastern advances to the Final Four and match up against Northwest Missouri. The, the amount of minutes that this Bearcat team plays, and they're particularly their primary guys, it, that's and the way Nova Southeastern plays, they like the pressure, they love to push the ball. I think they're averaging over 90, almost 90 some points a game. Uh, that's a, 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 a tempo that's very hard to keep up with if you're playing 40 minutes a game. Well, the Southeastern, the second highest scoring team in the country, 96 a night, over 33 games. That is awfully impressive. Only West Liberty out of the Mountain East Conference has been consistently a little bit better this year offensively. Approaching four minutes to play in a game where Bentley has certainly competed hard, but they've never really threatened to take the lead. They cut it to single digits a couple times early in the half. They couldn't get too close. Dreamer, long way out. Oh, jeez. Thought for a second that was going in. That was a deep 3-2. Good find. Mello Klein zings it out for right Kinsey. Dreamer, long rebound. Northwest Missouri State has led by double digits now for eight consecutive minutes. It's gotten as high as 20. Good, as you see, just trying to take this clock down. They keep working, they're getting good shots too. I don't know how you defend that any better. Trevor Hudgens is just that good. I was just gonna say, you get good shots <laughs> with, with guys like that. Lawrence off the dribble, tucks it, puts it home. Good play, Colton Lawrence. Great drive, took advantage of uh, Dreamer there. Looks like you know, he hurt his ankle there uh, earlier in this game, and yeah, he's walking a little bit slow. Bentley calls timeout, not happy with the defensive effort there as Trevor Hudgens is taking over. Had a quiet first half, but Hudgens now has 24 because he's putting on moves like that. And the Bearcats are just 246 away from a semifinal berth. Northwest Missouri State by 18 points, 61 to 43. Despite the fact this has not been their best effort of the season by any stretch, they are championship tested. And uh, 
it's worth reminding you, if you're not familiar with the Bearcats, if you don't know their program, they've won three of the last four national championships. They have won 21 of their last 22 NCAA tournament games coming in, as Lawrence thought he got fouled there. And uh, until somebody consistently proves they can knock the Bearcats off, I don't care what their seed is this week. To me, they've got to be the favorite because they haven't lost yet. Well, Brennan, and the way they've played today, it has shown that their experience is standing out. And they have just played absolutely fantastic. Northwest Missouri State, a little miscommunication there between Trevor and Diego. I'm sure they'll work that out. Hopefully for them, it probably won't bother them too much considering it's an 18-point game here. Long, quick three. Lawrence thought he had a good look. Mascari grabs the miss. Well, we're inside the final two minutes, and unfortunately for the Falcons, it looks like the last two minutes of their season. Bentley's had a great year. They were the champions in the Northeast 10, number 11th ranked team nationally, 25 and four. They lost to Stonehill early in the year, back in November. There's a three from Bernard off the mark. Also dropped a game in February to Adelphi, and they lost twice to Franklin Pierce in the regular season, but turned around and got Franklin Pierce in the NE10 championship game. Lost in a little trouble. Tried to manufacture the shot anyways, and just didn't work out. It's been a really good season for the Falcons as the Bearcats clear their bench, and they're going to bring a few new faces in. Spencer Schomers comes in. Blake Danishek onto the floor. Christian Stanislav, Danielle Abreu. All into the game, along with Byron Alexander. Yeah, Brennan, you talk about this Bentley team, and they've had some, just some tremendous success for these young men. It's a it's a historic season for them. Uh, you get to this point, it was two only two percent of teams are playing today in Division Two basketball, and they're one of them. Uh, they they have nothing to hang their heads about. Uh, it's it's tough to uh, accept it. And uh, you know, hey, you think about oh, what could I have done differently. This, that, the other. Uh, hey, you faced a really good team today, as you are. Bearcats just played a little bit better. Mello Klein comes off the floor. Colton Lawrence checks out. Pete Blust, all of them graduate students who came back for one more run at it. And their season and careers will finish in the Elite Eight. Bohenick, Isaac Martin, all on the floor along with Andrew DeSantis. That one pops out of bounds. Final minute of action. It's amazing. It's not talked about a, a, a ton either, but the amount of teams, particularly here in this Elite Eight, that had grad students uh, that were given back that year of eligibility during uh, from the 2020-2021 season due no to doubt. COVID. Sheesh, man. I mean, roster management right now as a college coach has to be as challenging as it has literally ever been. Between that and the transfer portal, I don't know how you do it, man. It's uh, it's a tough deal. Missed layup turns into a Stanislav rebound, and with a shot clock off, the Bearcats will dribble this thing out. Again, the two-time defending national champs, three of the last four national championships, have gone home to Maryville, Missouri. And in the 2022 version of the tournament, they are still the team to beat. Ben McCollum with a smile. The Bearcats moving on to the national semifinals on Thursday. Uh, great job today by Northwest Missouri State. And you tip your cap. To, to Bentley and Coach Lawson uh, on a terrific season. 31 years he's been at the helm and uh, just came up came up against a, a very good and, and certainly well-experienced team 
deep in tournament play in Northwest Missouri State. And they're going to the national semifinals. And whoever they match up against is going to have their hands full. Trevor Hudgens finished with a game-high 24 points at a big second half in guiding the Bearcats to a victory. Bernard with 12, Waters with 11, and this uh, Bearcat team continues to look like the real deal. 61-43 the final, Northwest Missouri State on to the semifinals.